Cute Little Panda Digital Drawing by Hot Pink Zebra Paper. Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to show you a panda digital drawing that I did on, just so you guys know the technological specs, I did it on an iPad 6 with an Apple Pencil using Sketchbook Pro. At least I think it's called Sketchbook Pro, they keep changing the names of these things, but um, it's a great drawing app if you've never used it before, it works really well, especially using something like an Apple Pencil, or if you are an Android uh, user, I know that there's different pens and stuff that you can use with Android products as well. So it works really well, it's pressure sensitive and all that fun stuff, so I hope you guys like this little digital drawing, and don't don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So I'm going to begin with and I'm going to take the pencil and I'm going to be sketching out the little base for my panda on a layer. So a lot of this that I do, I do with several different layers. So this is one layer and this is the only thing on this layer so that you can kind of make it disappear when you are ready for it to go away. And just sketch out your panda, add a circle for his eyes, an oval for his body, and then just kind of build details off of that. When I was doing this guy, it wasn't off of an image or anything. I was just sketching it from my mind. I was, you know, I had a little bit of free time on my hands. I'm like, you know what? I feel like drawing a panda. Then I made the background green on a separate layer on another layer. Yet I'm going to start filling in the light gray of the so there's the lighter areas of the panda and the darker areas. The lighter areas I did with a light gray and the darker areas I did with a medium dark gray. That way I have room to highlight and to shadow those colors so they're not just, if you do it starting out with white and black, there's no way you can highlight white and there's no way that you can add shadows to black. So if you make them um, some various color of gray, then you have room to work and make it so much more detailed and more live looking. So fill in all the darker areas with a medium gray. And of course this little guy is definitely a cartoon. He's very cutesy and I don't know even what you want to call it. It was like I said just a figment of my imagination and something that I came up with in the middle of, well I guess it wasn't the middle of the night. It was like nine o'clock. But for me that's the middle of the night these days. So there's that. And then I'm going to fill in his ears with that darker color of gray. And then after you have that done, as you can see, with all these different layers, the great thing is, is you can just erase the layer you're working on. And so you don't have to worry about ruining something else that has happened. So if I erase some pink, I'm not erasing any of my grays if they're on their own layer all by themselves. Then I put pink in the ears, some teal or like a a really pretty ocean blue for the eyes and then I'm going to take a fur texture brush and I'm going to add shadows and highlights to the white areas of the fur and as you can see I got a lot of that everywhere but I can go through with an eraser tool and just erase any of the extra that got on my background and clean up all of those lines and make them look so much more crisp add some shadows and some more details to that wispy part of his hair and then going around the perimeter and this is using a calligraphy pen i'm going to be adding all of the little fur texture to that lighter area of the fur on the edges that will make them look a little bit less crisp which you kind of want when you are getting them to look a bit more realistic then on the darker areas of fur I'm going to be highlighting them with a medium gray and shadowing them with black using that same little fur brush and then take and erase and clean up all of those lines as well and the, quickly the specs for the technology I'm using is I'm using an iPad uh, 6 an iPad 6 I think just like the regular iPad that now you can use the Apple Pencil with so I'm using an iPad an Apple Pencil and Sketchbook Pro is the drawing app that I'm using, which if you guys haven't um, used Sketchbook Pro in the past or haven't used it before, it is a wonderful drawing app and I've been using it for years. It's what I've done all of my animation with for the beginnings and the ends of all my videos. I have used that for a long time and it's really, it's so easy to work with that I highly recommend it. And then I'm going to go through and add the fur texture to everything else. So all of the darker areas of fur and the lighter areas that I hadn't done yet. So anywhere that is missing that, go through and add those little, little lines and like I said, with the Apple Pencil that I'm using, it is so easy to add those because it is pressure sensitive. So even if you're not using an Apple product, um, I know my husband has a Microsoft Surface Pro and those pens are the pressure sensitive as well. So you can use whatever drawing app you have on that too. I haven't played around with that too much, but I know that that would also work. And so then add all of those little fur texture for lines everywhere you have and try to mask the original line as much as you can so you don't see that sharp line that's hiding in there at all. You want to just be these really fluffy looking lines and add those around. And when you're doing this, don't just outline the gray area with gray. Use darker lines in the shadowed area and brighter lines in the highlighted area so that you can not, it looks more real. Then add little lines to separate his split lip some shadows inside the pink of the ear after you do that add the fluffy lines on that edge as well clean up all of that the most common 
things that I use for this are the airbrush and the eraser tool, I think just in general, because I airbrush the inside of the ears. And then I'm gonna take that airbrush and I'm going to be adding all of my little cloudy layers in the eyes. I start out with a darker teal right in the center and then I'm gonna take a more of a, like a minty green color and I'm gonna be adding all sorts of little lines in the eyes. And I'm gonna do a section on one eye, then do the other eye and go back and forth, not complete one eye entirely and then go to the other one because you won't ever get the same color again. So you wanna make sure, unless you save it, but. If you don't want to go through and save all of your colors, just go through and do each eye a little bit and then go back and forth. That's also going to give you a much more symmetrical result in the end anyway, so that works out well. I also took some purple and added some purple lines within my eyes just to make them a little bit more color variant and a little bit more lively. Add your pupils with black, a highlight with white, and that once again I'm using the airbrush for that. Add some shadows around the perimeter of the eye with your airbrush tool just like so. Clean up the nose, add some shadows on your nose with black and with white, add a shadow under your panda in general, and then you can go ahead and sign it and you are all done. I know that I said I signed this in 2018 as you saw. I actually drew this a couple months ago, so it was in 2018. But I hope you guys like this as much as I do. It was a fun little evening project for me. Please check out my Facebook and Instagram accounts to see more of my art and I will see you in my next video. Bye!